Hi there, Walker from Timbertone here. Welcome to the workshop. In this video, I make some simple picture frames with offcuts saved from the firewood pile. The timber looks like spotted gum and was already close to finished dimension. But with a hole in one board and some dressing to do, I wasn't sure how much wood I'd end up with. So initially, I allowed for one frame only. And I'm using an off-shelf frame for convenience to quickly source all the components. So let's get started. Because there wasn't much timber to spare, I opted to skip the joiner and go straight to the thickness up. Using the weathered side as the initial reference will minimise how much material gets dressed off this face. And as the boards only have slight bows, I can work around this once they're ripped and cut to size. And so with the first face plain true, the weathered side can now get a clean up. And by taking light passes, minimal material can be removed to ensure a good finish and maximum yield. Cleaned up pretty well I'd say. Nice flat faces and a great figure. And now to joint the edges. Again, only the bare minimum was removed, meaning there were still some slight defects on the boards. However, this will be fine to run against the table saw fence and those defects will get dressed off later. The saw gets set up to suit the board thickness and it was at this point I was able to determine exactly how much material I had to work with. The yield resulted in two 32mm pieces per board which was bang on what I was chasing. The boards are ripped to separate the first piece and then the waste is cut from the second. The ripping leaves saw marks along the edges of the boards, but these can quickly be removed by a hand plane. Spotted gum typically has an interlocking grain, so a sharp, low angle plane is used to minimise tear out. And so with the pieces cleaned up, the router can now be set for the edging. I'm going for a recessed bull nose on both edges of the frame's front perimeter, and these will be cut first to provide better work holding as they're machined. I'll also be using the fence for these edges. And while this isn't essential for bearing type cutters, it just makes the whole process a lot easier and safer. And once the bull noses are on, the router can be refitted to cut the rebate on the rear of the frames. So firstly, the zero point of the cutter is found, the DRO reset, and the cutter raised to the required height. In this case, a five millimeter rebate will be perfect to accept the glass, picture, and backing. And that's it, all the edges are on and we can start cutting these sticks down. For the initial cut, I just used the mitre gauge on the saw which honestly isn't all that accurate. It's about two degrees off, but that's something taken care of shortly using a shooting board to true up the edges. A bench hook on the shooting board ensures a secure fit in the vise. The 90 degree wedge can come out and some paraffin wax from a white candle is used to lubricate the run. Each piece is sat against the wedge, which acts like a fence. And then using a low angle plane, fine shavings are taken from the end grain, right down to the exact measurement. A perfect fit. With everything shot to size and bundled, I like to make one final check before moving on. A layout of the pieces confirms everything's good to go and it's time to glue up. I'm going to be using Tight Bond 3 for this glue up, mainly for the strength, but the longer working time is also good. As these will be end to end grain joins, I'm going to size the glued faces. This is done by applying a mix of glue thinned with water prior to applying the neat glue for joining. The sizing minimizes how much glue the end grain can take up to ensure the joint isn't starved during curing. Once the pieces have had several minutes to go off, they can be positioned ready for gluing. I'm using a band clamp to bring the joints together uniformly, but the height together with the shoulder on the front of the frame caused me a bit of grief while trying to cramp it all together. So for the next two, I used some scrap ply to raise the job to the center of the clamp. And this worked great. Once the clamp is tight, 
a quick adjustment on the corners ensures they're sitting flush. The excess glue can be wiped away with a damp rag and the corners are checked to ensure everything's square. All set. End grain miters are one of the weakest joints that can be made. So to help reinforce the corners, I'm going to be adding some splines. These are small slithers of material glued across the miter to add structural support. And I've decided to use Tasmanian oak as the timber to add a bit of contrast to the spotted gum. The blanks are ripped close to size on the bandsaw and then cleaned up with a hand plane to the final dimension. To assist with planing, I'm using double-sided tape to hold the piece onto some scrap ply and the vise. And I reckon I got stitched up with this roll as it always seems to take forever to get the backing off. Finally! The piece is around 3mm thick and a quick check of the grain direction helps position the piece for planing. Once at the correct dimension, the strip can be carefully separated from the ply with a chisel and the tape then pulled from the back. The strip can now be tested in the corner's recess to ensure a nice fit before cutting into blanks. A slightly sloppy fit is good. When glued, the pieces swell and their fragility limits how forcefully they can be inserted. An old oil dripper is used to get the glue right into the recess for the spline. When the joint is filled, the spline can be pushed home and held in place with blue tape. With the joint cured, the excess gets cut off and then plane flush with the frame using a block plane. And the final finishing can now start. Some edges of the frame sit slightly proud, so these get cleaned up with a sharp chisel. And then the corners are checked and any that aren't completely flush are cleaned up with scrapers and planes. So with everything ready for finish and fit off, I'll let the montage do the talking. Watching. I'll be posting periodic videos of timber inspired projects so please hit that subscribe button. See you later!